I have been so excited about this for so long. We've brought together an entire simulation team. We've brought in an Excel spreadsheet wizard. We put together basically a whole team so that we can do these types of simulations. And the first one we wanted to do was use Football Manager to simulate the Premier League. So we've simulated the Premier League a hundred times, and we have taken all of the data from that, from player stats to league positions to everything, and put it into what can only be described as the holy grail of data. We've actually done this once before. We did it before the Euros. If you want to check out that video, it is right there. But it took absolutely forever because we didn't have an organized system of doing it. So now we're going to try and do one of these simulations basically whenever we find something that we want to simulate, <laughs> which is very exciting. It took a long time to get the workflow in place for us to be able to do it. But we have seven pages of raw data that our boy Tyler Kirchman has put together. And when I went to Tyler and we've worked together a couple of times, he's really good at taking a bunch of numbers and turning them into stuff that you can process visually. I asked him what he might want in return. And he said, you never know who's watching. So this is Tyler Kirchman's LinkedIn, the guy that that actually did this. Of course, we also pay him because we pay the people who work for the channel. But if you, you know, want to reach out, you think this is cool, he has to put his LinkedIn here. He didn't ask for me to do this. I just figured I should do it because what you're about to see is freaking awesome. And what we're going to start with is the actual league table. So what we're able to calculate is the average position of the teams through the 100 simulations. So one through 20, the average position in the Premier League. Very quickly, the parameters, it was a very small database in Football Manager, just the Premier League was playable, but we allowed transfers in and out because particularly we felt this would affect the Newcastle situation and we wanted to give them the leeway to actually make things happen. And so we're gonna go from 20 to one, we're gonna run you through who won the most league titles, who got relegated the most, because weirdly, some of these answers are different <laughs> than what you'd think based off the average league position, but never mind. And we'll show you stills of the entire table so you can pause it at any point and process and find the one cool fact from these 100 football manager simulations that you like. It is according to football manager, which is, it has to be said, the most accurate way to simulate results in, in footballing competitions, this is how the table should look. In 20th place, Norwich, with an average position of 18.12. That's a yikes for me, dog. 19th, Crystal Palace, average position of 16.6. They're overachieving. Brentford is in 18th, 16.16 is their average position. Then freaking Brighton, get no love from football manager here. After them, we get inside those that average finishing in the top 15, which would be Watford, then Wolves, very, very weirdly Wolves, finishing 15th in average league position. Then there's Burnley, doing probably better than you would have expected, averaging a 12.8. Southampton averaging a 12.45. And Leeds averaging a 12.05 and a 12th place finish in the average position table. Newcastle, because they were allowed to spend money, ends up finishing with an average position of 10.77. West Ham, the last team that didn't average finishing in the top 10, finished with a 10.55. Then we have Aston Villa, 8.84 average position in the league. Everton showing that they have a lot more talent than they've been able to put on display with an 8.63. Then you have Leicester above them with a 7.02. Tottenham at a 6.87. And Arsenal at a 5.59, averaging a fifth place finish, which I feel like the Gunners would take. But the thing that really stands out in the top four is the subscribe button. Uh, if you click on that subscribe button, we're able to do more cool things like this. And if you're enjoying this kind of data, we really appreciate it. Let's be honest, the subscribe button top of the league. All the pundits said so. They've got great young players coming through. They've got a great system and elite manager. Hey, I won the streamer showdown. I'm allowed to say that. But now for the top four. Finishing in fourth place, Chelsea. A 3.86 average position, but they did at least qualify for the Champions League 53 times. They also missed Europe altogether 25 times. As you can see from this table, they made Europa League, they made Conference League, and Chelsea did win three titles. Oh, by the way, Arsenal did actually win one title out of the 100 simulations. They are the lowest team on the position table to have won a title. But the top three won all other 96 championships combined, and that starts with Manchester United, who finished third in the position table, 2.84 
was the average position. They averaged over 23 wins per the 38 matches played. They won 20 titles. They qualified for the Champions League 66 times. But the top two is where things get um, weird. They definitely get weird. Because second in the position table is Liverpool. 2.07 was the average position of Liverpool. They averaged 24 and a half wins just 5.42 losses though which is less than manchester city of course who's at the top of the position table with an average of 1.97 man city averaged about 0.4 more points per simulation but won four less titles liverpool won 40 titles and man city won 36 i don't know what to take away from that they're obviously very close but liverpool won four more titles they were able to get the job done more often both liverpool and man city were basically four to five bets to get into the champions league they did a very good job at getting into the champions league but liverpool won more titles congratulations to them i know what you're wondering what team made the europa league more often than every other team that would be Tottenham. Woo! With 32 Europa League qual, that's two spots at the table. They hit it 32 times. <laughs> and then Aston Villa, really weirdly, was the number one conference league qualifier. They finished seventh 19 times in the simulations. Tottenham right behind them at 18. Don't worry, they're there. Leicester got in there 17 times. Who was the most relegated? Uh, this is very obvious based off the position table. 84 out of 100 simulations relegated Norwich. Here, let me sort this. I can make my life easier. This is an interactive table. <laughs> yeah, I can sort it. You can look at it for yourself. Brighton, 36. Watford, 28. Wolves, 24. Southampton got relegated 11 times. Even though we let them spend money, Newcastle got relegated eight times. Leeds and Burnley, three times. And then Aston Villa, West Ham, and Everton all got relegated once. So basically, everybody that isn't in the top seven teams got relegated at least once. That just keeps things spicy. But if you think we're done there, we're not. And this includes not just a bunch of data about who finished in the league and where, but data about the goal scoring ability of each of the players who scored the highest percentage of goals for their teams, who are the best goalkeepers. We have everything to see how accurately football manager was able to predict the Premier League season. If we go over to our next tab, you can literally look at each team, which is graded in a tremendously large number of metrics. I didn't even know that our simulation team was capable of this. It is that cool. The top average goal scorers for Arsenal, for example, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Bukayo Saka, Lacazette, who averaged the most XG for the team. Well, that was actually Bukayo Saka. Martin Odegaard finished third on that. You can go all the way down. All the guys that were able to get an XG throughout the course of the entire simulation. Best average rating for Arsenal was Bukayo Saka. You can see their league positions. The lowest they finished was 13th. Obviously, they won the league one time. Fabulously interesting. Let's take a look at like United. What's the lowest United finished? 12th. Oh, that would be fun. Man City, the lowest they finished was 6th. The Manchester City was in Europe every single time with their leading goal scorer being Bernardo Silva. So it looks like football manager was on the ball on that one. What about Liverpool? Fifth. Liverpool's lowest possible finish was fifth. You know how good that is? You know how freaking good that is. That's very freaking good. Osala averaged over 24 goals a simulation. Shut the front door. The notable underachievers, Burnley, Everton, United, Newcastle, Leicester, the overachievers in real life compared to football manager, Brighton, Crystal Palace, Wolves, and West Ham, just in case you didn't want to like spend the time to go look at the league table. I'm going to talk to Tyler about ways to make this publicly available because this page in particular is just so interesting to peruse. Wait, Tottenham finished 16th. Oh, unbelievable. It's time we head to the next page where you get a visual representation of the number of wins that each team got. The takeaway from Tyler in the top right is that wearing yellow is usually a bad strategy. True. But how about the top scorers throughout the simulation? With a strong sense of non-realism, Romelu Lukaku averaged nearly 30 goals per simulation, which is preposterous. It also proves that in the football manager match engine, Romelu Lukaku is arguably the best striker in the world. Averaged over four goals more than Harry Kane, averaged over five goals more than Mohamed Salah, 
and Ronaldo dropped 24 goals because he hadn't been nerfed yet in the Football Manager match engine. The other three to average over 20 goals were Heung-Min Son, Kai Havertz, and Dominic Calvert-Lewin, the highest placed midfielder, but I, I'm removing him because Kai Havertz can play striker in the match engine or forward, is Bruno Fernandes at 18.93, literally the next guy on the list. Manchester City did a good job of putting three players over a 16-goal average, Gabby Jesus, Raheem Sterling, joining Bernardo Silva. But what's interesting to me is the share of team goals, because this is the percentage of the entire team's goals on average that a player scored. And that's where we find Harry freaking Kane at 49% of Tottenham's goals in the simulation. But what I find truly exceptional is that below Romelu Lukaku, Odson Edouard, and Chris Wood, there's Heung-Min Son, which means Tottenham had two of the five players in share of goals. If you add those together, which I don't want to do, but I'm going to try, is 91% of their team's goals were scored by two players. Kinda hard to be great when that's the case, right? Surprise appearances on this list probably include Shea Adams for you, scored over 33% of Southampton's goals in the simulations, and Ivan Tony scored nearly 40% of his team's goals. You can see how much of an outlier Romelu Lukaku is. I mean, a ridiculous, ridiculous outlier. I could stare at this for hours. We move. But based off what you were probably interested in, who was the best player? In all the simulations, it's most solid. It's not Romelu Lukaku, actually. Romelu Lukaku is actually all the way down here at 7.36, despite the fact that he scored a few more goals on average than Mo Salah. He didn't contribute to a lot of the other phases of the game. That's where Mo Salah came in with an average overall rating in 100 simulations of 7.64. Kevin De Bruyne had a 7.53 and Cristiano Ronaldo dropped a 7.5. Bernardo Silva, Sadio Mane, and Virgil van Dijk ended up over 7.4, with Riyad Mahrez, Raheem Sterling, Harry Kane, Marcus Rashford, who played less minutes than a lot of these guys, but not as few as Riyad Mahrez, who played very few minutes of course, the simulation. Jaden Sancho, good news for, for United fans. Lukaku, of course. Zach Steffen, who is a backup goalkeeper for City, which is probably the easiest job in the world. Phil Foden, who didn't play a ton of minutes. Bakayo Saka, Allison, Bruno Fernandez, Ederson, Conte, Ruben Diaz, and Declan Rice are all the players that finished at at least an average of 7.3 in the Premier League. Team performance obviously influences match rating to some extent with players like Zach Steffen, but that's a pretty convincing list. I'd say Football Manager got that right. Average passing percentage, both Liverpool and Man City averaged 89% pass completion, but so did Chelsea. Burnley averaged 88% pass completion, to which I call absolute <laughs> There is no way, there is no way. Who had the most dribbles per 90? You guessed it, Theo Walcott, followed by Jacob Murphy, and Mads Ruslev. Christian Pulisic's on the list, so is Nelson Semedo, Callum Hudson-Odoi, and Tariq Lamptey. If you click on each player, you can obviously see the amount of minutes they played, which to be honest, Mads Ruslev played a significant number of minutes. Dude can just dribble his butt off. Played more minutes than Christian Pulisic. Sad American noises. Interceptions per 90? Aaron Juan Basaka was second, but Nathan Ferguson was actually first. Connor Roberts, Costa Simikas, and Jacques Ancelo also finished above three. And hey, you're knocking the TAA defense, he's right there. Look at him. He tackles 8.18 average for Virgil van Dyke. Andreas Christensen deserves a shout out for finishing at 8.07. And Harry Maguire is on the list. Ruben Diaz, Wesley Fafana, wish him a speedy recovery in real life. And Ozan Kabak, who played a ton of minutes, the Turkish center back for Norwich, and actually made a ton of key tackles. Might we have identified a diamond in the rough here, at least for your football manager save. One of the most interesting takeaways from this simulation, for me as somebody that's a football manager connoisseur, is that the passing percentages of each team are all within 4% of each other, which is weird because in real life, Burnley is only at 67.8%. And they're up near the top, actually. They're 88%. And Man City is at the top at 88% in real life. So Football Manager doesn't show as wide of a passing variance as uh, is real life. But that's really the first hole we've been able to poke in the whole thing. That and Crystal Palace and Everton. Here we have the goalkeepers. Goals allowed per 90. It is your boy. Viljami Sisialo, I think. Vil Viljami Sinizalo. Kasper Smyka was actually second in mistakes leading to goals. That's not good. Nick Pope was there. David De Gea was fifth, which that's harsh. Pickford was seventh in mistakes leading to goals. You know who is the best? Zach Steffen. Again, being the backup keeper for Man City. That's quite possibly the easiest job in the world. Feel free to freeze frame this and check out the graph between goals allowed and mistakes leading to goals. Kasper Smyka leading the way until you realize that Viliami Sinisalo is all the way in the top right corner. <laughs>
here you can see each individual simulation. Once you hit play, we go through to the, well, let me sort by position here. You go through each one of the simulations that our simulation team actually did. You see who won, you see who got relegated, you see who finished everywhere in between. And that is just a really cool thing to, to click through. You just click play and they keep on going by. You can look for that one time that Manchester United finished whatever it was, 12th, and dream that maybe someday I'll be back there. We're going to do a lot more of these. I think Football Manager is such an interesting tool to simulate what the actual prediction for something is because they do so much work on the research and so much work in making sure everything's set up right. And honestly, they've nailed a lot of it. They've helped us identify the teams that are really surprising in the Premier League. We'll see how the actual position table matches up with the final regular season table in the Premier League. I appreciate you guys watching this. If you haven't already, please do check out the Twitch streams that I do four or five days a week. The link is down in the description. I'd love to hang out with you live and for you to give us ideas about what simulation we should do next. If you want to watch what happens on that Twitch stream, we actually recently won the Football Manager Championship. That is called the FM Streamer Showdown. Happens once a month. We won the last one in a video taking you through all of that live, obviously in a condensed version. It happens over three days. Is right here. So if you want to check out what that looks like, by all means, head to that video and hopefully I'll see you on a stream. Have a good one. Keep it easy, breezy, and beautiful. Hashtag... Not sponsored.